Thank you guys for tuning in to Tag Church here in Little Rock, Arkansas. We pray that this message will truly be a blessing for you today. If you would like to partner with us financially, you can do so by visiting us at tagchurch.net. And also, if you have any prayer requests, please don't hesitate to send it to the email address on your screen because we would love to partner with you in prayer. So, I hope you're ready for a word from the Lord today. Let's get right into it, and God bless you. Take your Bibles, open them with me to 2 Thessalonians chapter number 2 this morning. 2 Thessalonians chapter number 2. I won't keep you all day, I promise. I know there's kids in the building, and I promise you they won't bother me. If they get a little noisy, I, I won't, they won't bother me. Allow them to just be kids. I'll preach right over them. If they get loud, I'll get louder. Amen. And, uh, and I know that children's um, you know, attention uh, is, is very short. A lot of adults' attention is very short. I know that when people sleep while I'm preaching, I always tell people I don't show up at your job and sleep while you're working. But I do know whether you're a child, whether this is your first time in church or first time in a long time, or whether you've been sitting on the pews for longer than I've been alive, today's message is in an hour where we ought to be hearing more preaching about it. I'm disturbed that the pulpits in America have been silent on the next greatest event on God's calendar, and that's the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And whether you're young or old, whether you're here today as a prodigal or as a senior saint, I want you to know today that every one of us, no matter what level you're on today, no matter what spiritual level, educational level, Every one of us need to hear what we're going to hear from the pulpit and from God's Word this morning. So follow along with me, take good notes, and let's hear together what the Spirit of the Lord would say to the church in this hour. 2 Thessalonians, please, chapter number 2, beginning in verse number 1. Verse number 1, Now we beseech you, brethren... By the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto Him that you be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that the man of sin be revealed the son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that as God sits in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Verse 5, don't you remember that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. And now you know what withholds, that he might be revealed in his time for the mystery of iniquity or the mystery of lawlessness does already work. Only he who now lets will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall the wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. I want to preach this morning. Keep your Bibles open because we're going to look at this passage in depth today. I want to preach this morning a message entitled The Mystery of Lawlessness. I want you, if you have not already, please take out your smart devices and go to Tag Church on your social media, on Facebook, or on the YouTube, and I want you to share this live broadcast. I believe that people will tune in to this message 
and get right with God. How many of you believe that with me today? I believe people will just be scrolling across Facebook and pop onto this message today, hear the word of the Lord, and get right with God. So share today's service before you do anything else this morning. And let's just pray right now. I want us to pray that God, by His Holy Spirit, would convict not only those that may be in this room that's not right with God, that's not ready for the coming of the Lord, but also that He would prepare the hearts of those who would be watching by social media, your friends that you've shared this service with. Pray with me out loud. Come on. Father, we pray right now for Holy Holy Ghost conviction today. God, we need you to go beyond what we can say and do. Lord, I'm just a human. Lord, I'm just a mouthpiece today. God, I don't have the ability. I'm not even, even if I was educated enough, I wouldn't have the ability in my own strength to convince a sinner to get right with you. But we know that the Holy Ghost pierces the heart of man, and I pray that your conviction would flood this room from this moment until the end of this service and I ask God that your conviction would also flood these airwaves, these live stream broadcasts and God you would you would captivate an audience out there in the social media world and that people would be saved today because of the word of the Lord and we thank you for it, we praise you for it and we give you all the glory. Give the Lord one more clap of praise in this house today. Amen. Now before I jump into this word today, I just want to say to Andrew back there, uh, it's not very often we only would have one graduate that we're honoring, but you just happen to be the only graduate this year, which means you get all of the limelight. And I was sitting there thinking, uh, you're going to go into, what's that, uh, to be a, huh, culinary, culinary? That's a fancy word for you're going to go be a cook. Is that like a chef and stuff? That's what I was thinking. I was sitting there thinking, you know, on staff, I have an executive pastor. Uh, we have an associate pastor. We have a uh, evangelism and discipleship pastor. We have a family pastor here on staff. We have a worship pastor. Did I miss anybody? We, I mean, we got staff for everything. We don't have a culinary arts pastor on staff. I, you know, I mean... I was just thinking, maybe the Lord's preparing you to keep your pastor and this staff fed. And, and you know, I believe in a good, well-rounded preacher. Amen. We need to be well-rounded in preaching the gospel. But congratulations to you this morning, Andrew. I'm so very proud of you. I've been able to watch you for the last six and one-half years grow up. And, uh, man, when you're smiling up here, I leaned to your mama and said, that's a million-dollar smile right there. You'll, be the, you'll, you, you'll have the best smile of any chef I've ever met. I can tell you that. And that's the joy of the Lord. I know it today. Amen. Amen. I know that every preacher for hundreds of years, even for a few centuries now, have said what I'm about to say, which only validates it all the more. So allow me today to say it loud and clear. We are living in the last days and Jesus Christ is getting ready to rapture his church. 2 Peter chapter 2 verses 3 and 4 says there will come a time where scoffers will come saying where is the promise of his coming. It says that in the last days there will be those that will say well I've always heard it said that Jesus is coming again but he hasn't come. My grandpa was a preacher and he believed that Jesus would come in his lifetime and Jesus didn't come in my grandpa's lifetime. They've been saying this for hundreds hundreds of years. Can I tell you what the scripture is saying to us is that the end times will be met with scoffing. The end times will be met with mocking. You would think that with all of the signs of the times that are happening in the world today from the from the wars and the rumors of wars, from the earthquakes in various places, from the crazy uh, uh, weather patterns that we're seeing, from the lawlessness that's filling our streets, from the sin that parades 
parades down Main Street. Hear me today. From the increase of knowledge, from the stage being set for the Antichrist to come and set up his kingdom, his false kingdom, you would think that the world would see these signs and they would be shaken to their core. The reason there's so many signs and the churches aren't full is because the signs, hear me today, were never for the unbelievers. Matter of fact, the signs are for the church. Jesus told his disciples, when you see these things, you look up for your redemption draweth nigh. Signs have never filled a church. Matter of fact, just the opposite. They'll scoff at the signs. They'll mock at messages like this. They'll say, who does he think he is? A prophet saying that what's happening in America is just a sign that we're living in the end times or at the end of days. I want you to know today, let them come and mock. Let them come and ridicule. Let them come and scoff. But it does not change a date that God has put on the calendar of heaven with the title Rapture of the Church. He's going to turn to His Son and He's going to say, Son, it's time you go get my children. It's time, Gabriel, you sound the trumpet. It's time for the dead in Christ to rise first and we which are alive and remain to be caught up with them in the air. Last weekend, two astronauts loaded an American rocket and from American soil they lifted off sending them towards the International Space Station at speeds reaching more than 17,500 miles per hour. You know, as they took off, I thought those are probably the two smartest guys on planet Earth. They got off of this Earth at the right time. Hallelujah. You couldn't plan their departure any better. In the midst of COVID and in the midst of rioting, them guys said, we're going to go hang out at the International Space Station for a while. But I've got good news for you here this morning. There's getting ready to be another takeoff. And it's not not going to be from Florida alone. It's going to be from every state, from every nation all around this globe. There's about to be a countdown and only the Father in heaven knows the time. But when he gets to lift off, the church is going to lift off at speeds that will exceed 17,500 miles an hour. I'm telling you, your Bible says in a flash, in the twinkling of an, of an eye. Come on, somebody, twinkle your eye at me this morning. Your Bible says in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 52, that in a flash, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised in perish, imperishable and we will be changed. It's going to happen so fast that Fox News is going to miss it. It's going to happen so fast that CNN is not going to be able to capture it on camera. However, breaking news is going to interrupt every TV show, every national sports broadca- game that's being broadcast Podcast is going to be, I don't care if it's the Super Bowl or the World Series, when the rapture of the church takes place, everything happening in the world is going to shut down. The news stations, stations are going to interrupt the broadcast. Your favorite sitcom, your favorite reality show, hear me today. I don't care if it's the finale of The Bachelor, it's going to be interrupted. And by the way, if you're a Christian at home watching the finale of The Bachelor, you might want to make sure you're ready to meet the Lord because you've been filling your mind with lust and sex before marriage and language that isn't... My God, I come to preach today. I said I come to preach today. It'll be the most mysterious news break ever known to man. It is breaking news that you won't want to be here to hear about. Did you hear me today? You don't want to get that text that says, have you heard millions have vanished from all over the world. You don't want to turn on your TV or your radio when driving down the highway to hear that breaking news that millions have vanished without a trace into thin air. It will be the rapture of the church. You 
are privileged to know that because many of you have been raised to believe it. You've read the Word of God, but for the majority of people living on this earth today, they will not know what have happened. They will say UFOs have come and taken them. There will be all mysterious uh, thoughts of what had happened, but I'm going to tell you today, just as sure as I'm standing in front of you preaching it, it is going to happen, and it's sooner than it's ever been. Come on, somebody, give the Lord praise. Moments before television stations break in to report the vanishing of humans, I can only imagine what the world will be experiencing. A call comes in to the Little Rock Police Department. My child is missing. A husband walks out of the room and just a few moments later walks back into the room to find his wife is gone. Do you realize today if the event that I'm preaching on this morning happens while I'm preaching, if it was to happen in the next 20, 30 minutes of this message I'm preaching to you today, that before you realize it, before I'm able to finish the word that I just started when the rapture took place, before you can even take your next breath, you will be out of this building with only your clothes left behind laying in your seat. I said a few weeks ago, if you believe he came and he was born of a virgin, and if you're, if you're crazy enough to believe that he rose from the dead after dying on a cross, then you must also believe the whole story that he's also coming again and that it will be miraculous. It is a mystery today, but we will depart from this earth and be with the Lord forever. I can only imagine as some of you who aren't right with God today, some of you who are in a backslidden state, some of you who are a prodigal, some of you here today who are playing games with God, you're lukewarm, you're not on fire for God, but you're not cold, you're religious is what you are, and nothing makes Jesus sick more than the spirit of religion. Religious, a lukewarm spirit. He said, I want to vomit you out of my mouth. Listen, you're playing games with God. I'm telling you, it's time. Quit hanging around the cross. It's time to get on the cross. Jesus said, unless you pick up your cross and follow me. He said you got to die. You got to be willing to pick up your cross and deny yourself and follow me as a disciple. Are you hearing me here today? It's been a long time since I've been hearing amens and it sounds good. Amen. Y'all don't know what it's like preaching to an empty house. Some of these staff pastors put balloons up all over with faces. Donald Trump sat on the front row for several weeks. It's not the same preaching to balloon. There's nothing better than a full church shouting amen when the preacher's preaching good. Woo! It's like fuel. That's why I preach twice as long when y'all are here. <laughs> Come on, somebody. I'm talking about those who aren't right with God. Before you even knew what happened, the majority of this room is vanished. And you're sitting there in a message like this one, wondering why you even waited for an altar call. Why you even sat there thinking, I'm not going to respond. I know I'm not ready to get right with God. I'm not ready to go all in. You're going to sit there. You're going to wonder why you didn't run forward while the preacher was preaching. I'm going to tell you, friend, before you know it, before you know it, listen to me, church. Listen to me, believer. You're going to be airborne cap, uh, uh, through the ceiling, and you're going to be robed with royal garments and in the presence of Jesus instantly. But I can only imagine what will happen when the world realizes loved ones have vanished. A police call comes into the Little Rock Police Department. Something strange has happened at Tag Church this Sunday morning. I was trying to get a hold of my loved one. They wouldn't answer their phone. They didn't come home. I knew they'd went to church. 
So I drove up to church to check on them. I walked in the building, and the building was empty, but there were clothes laying all over the chairs. Something strange, 911 dispatcher, has happened at Tag Church. Jesus said it this way. Two will be working in a field. One will be taken. One will disappear is what he said, and one will be left behind. There will be a couple lying in the bed. The husband will reach over to touch his wife, to put his hand around her to realize she is gone. An older, elderly couple will be driving down the road when all of a sudden their car crashes into a ditch. The car behind them stops to check on them only to find that there's nobody in the car, only some clothes lying in the driver and in the passenger seat. A nurse runs out of the maternity ward at Baptist Hospital shouting the news, all the babies are gone. All the babies are gone. Trains begin to jump track as their conductors go airborne. Planes suddenly begin to fly off course and they begin, air traffic controllers begin to radio their pilots telling them uh, that they're losing altitude. But no one responds because the pilot, he is gone. Hallelujah. Police have been called to a local emergency at a cemetery because hundreds of graves have bursted open and the coffins are are empty. All the armed forces and the National Guard are put on alert. They're called to duty. UFOs are suspected. Aliens from another planet have kidnapped the best of our citizens. Uh, Panic and riots. And you think there's panic and riots on the streets today. Miss the rapture. Panic and riots are reported as millions run through the streets looting and even asking the question, what in the world has happened? A rebellious teenager, listen to me young person, a rebellious teenager is driving down the road and he hears the breaking news and he pulls over to call his Holy Ghost filled, tongue talking, Bible believing, come on somebody, devil stomping mother, only to hear the phone just keep on ringing and ringing and ringing. A backslidden 20-year-old girl living with her boyfriend hears the breaking news and she tells her boyfriend, take me home now. She runs into the bedroom of her parents' home in the middle of the night but they are gone. The bed is empty. She runs down to the hall to the bedroom of her on fire Christian brother only to find he too is gone. Thousands gather in their dead religious churches the following Sunday. They gather to in their in their churches that haven't preach the word in their churches that have compromised the doctrines of the word of God. They gather hoping that their culturally relevant pulpit jockey pastor will show up and a pastor finally shows up with a gray face trembling as he stands before them. A man takes hold of his cowardly pastor because in the list where it says in your Bible that these will not inherit the kingdom of God that I referenced to earlier, in that list is also the word, the cowardly. That's right, right there with the homosexuals, the adulterers, the fornicators are the cowardly. I think it's the coward preachers that fill our pulpits and don't open the Word of God and don't stand up as a prophet in this day that says, Thus saith the Lord. It's the cowardly preachers who Jesus said, They will say to Him, Did we not preach in Your name? Did we not cast out devils in Your name? And He will say to them, Depart from Me. I never knew You. It could be the cowardly Christian who comes to church church week after week but is too much of a coward to live their life in front of 
in front of unbelievers in their workplace. They're too much of a coward to share the gospel with their neighbors. I don't know. All I know, Pastor Dennis, is the Bible says that cowards will not inherit the kingdom. And in that dead church, some man is going to grab a hold of his cowardly pastor and he's going to say, you need to tell me right now what's going on. You told us that salvation is not through Christ alone. You told me that that I could continue in this lifestyle and God loves me just the way that I am and I'll make it to heaven. You told me I didn't have to repent and like most preachers are preaching today across all denominations they're going to get hold of that cowardly preacher and say and you told me there was no hell. Now I want to know the truth. Are you right or is this Bible right? I'm going to tell you today friend the answer to that. Don't ever listen to a man who preaches anything contrary to what's found in the 66 chapters of this book that's sitting on your lap today. He's a false prophet. He's a false teacher. Many of our denominations today have false prophets serving as their head bishop, as their general superintendents, as the leader of the entire organization. False prophets don't just come to you at 3 a.m. on Christian television trying to sell you a bottle of water from the Jordan River that they got out of the toilet at their ministry headquarters if you'll sow a seed for $1,000 and they're wearing a suit that costs $10,000 and like you told me about the false teacher in Branson, Missouri, who said, men, if you don't have a suit that cost at least $300 in your closet, you're not even born again. I'm not even talking about those false prophets today. I'm talking about the ones that are filling our pulpits all across America that are preaching a gospel that is another gospel. They're preaching a doctrine that is a false doctrine and they are sending more people to hell with the lies from the pulpit than even, now listen, they're in a worse condition than when they came to their churches. It's the blind leading the blind. They're going to tell their, ask their preachers, tell us now who do we believe? I want to show you this morning, do you still have your Bible open? 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 1 I appreciate y'all letting me preach this way today. Not every church would let me preach this way. And after 11 weeks, it feels good. (laughs) It feels good today. But I'm going to tell you, it don't matter how hard I preach. It don't matter how truthful I am with you today. If you're here today or you're watching by social media or on YouTube or on the website, wherever you may be watching, until you're ready to surrender and get right with God, my preaching won't get you to heaven. Your mama's salvation won't get you to heaven, sir. Kids, listen to me. Your grandparents, I know they're holy people, but you're standing alone on judgment day. I don't want to care. I don't even care if you went to Sunday school. I was baptized when I was three. If you was baptized when you was three, you might want to try it again. I don't care if you sprinkled when you was a baby. Listen to me today. There's only one way you can be sure your name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life. There's only one way you can be sure when that trumpet sounds you're ready to go. There's only one way that you can be sure today that heaven will be your home and hell will be shunned for all eternity. There's only one way that you can be certain and that is you must have a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. He must be your Savior who saves you from your sin, but He also must be your Lord that you live your life by. Listen, that means when He's Lord, if He says stop, you stop stop. If he says don't do that, you don't do that. If he says go, you go. If he says move, you move. If he says stay, you stay. Many in America have made him Savior, but they failed to make him Lord. And I want you to know today that yes, he came to save you from your sins, but your Bible says that you must confess with your mouth, not that Jesus is Savior, not that he is friend, and he is, not that he is good, and he is, but you must confess 
confess him as Lord and believe in your heart God raised him from the dead then and only then shall you be saved he wants to be Lord today 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 I want to just show you a couple things in our opening text. Verse 1 begins with these words, the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. I want to teach you. Can I teach you for a little bit? Take some notes. Let me switch gears. Teach for just a few minutes. It begins with the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. That refers to both the rapture of the church and the second coming. I've taught you this before. I won't spend any time here. Just know those are two separate events, the rapture and the second coming. But in this verse, verse 1, he's talking about both events. Some passages, it's just about the rapture. Other passages, it's just about the second coming. In this passage, he's going to be talking, and this is important, and teaching Paul the Apostle, writing the church at Thessalonica, he's going to be teaching them about both comings of the Lord, the rapture and then his second coming. It says in verse 1 also, and the gathering or and by our gathering together unto him. Everybody say the word gathering. It says our gathering. This phrase strictly refers to the rapture. Now why is that important for me to understand that now? Because here in a minute I'm going to preach something that some of you, I know it because you've been raised in church and it's been preached to you wrong. It was preached to me wrong. I raised up believing it wrong. But I'm going to show you truth today. Some of you say, wait a minute preacher, that ain't the way I've ever heard it. Others of you are going to say, I've never seen it that way. Wow, that, that now I see it. Remember, it's a mystery. We're dealing with the mystery of lawlessness with which deals with the rapture of the church. I don't want to get ahead of myself, but the mystery, why is lawlessness? Lawlessness, the sin. Lawlessness, why is it a mystery? It's a mystery because of how it's being held back. But a time's coming when there will be no more holding back lawlessness when the rapture of the church takes place. So you need to understand here that we're talking about the rapture in verse 1 when it uses the word gathering right there. Why is that important now? Because of context. Look at verse 2. It says that you soon or that you be not soon shaken as the day of the Lord is at hand. Be not shaken. Turn to your neighbor and say don't be shaken. Come on. Turn to somebody else. Shout don't be shaken. Why is the church so shaken today? Why is the church so afraid today? Why is the church so in so much fear today? The Bible says the con, uh, regarding the coming of the Lord and our gathering together with Him that we are not to be shaken. I just want to encourage and bless somebody today. Don't be shaken by lawlessness on our streets. Don't be shaken by what's happening in Washington going to be a reelected here in November? I don't know. And you know what? It doesn't matter if it's Republican or Democrat. I know who I'm going to vote for. I know who I hope will be president. But I do know that the hearts of the presidents and the kings are in the hands of the Lord. And my vote, really, the only thing it does is makes me a good law-abiding citizen because at the end of the day, God's going to put in the White House who God wants in the White House. And I want you to know today, it don't be shaken. Everybody gets on Facebook. They're all so shaken at every little thing that happens. Don't be shaken by what the media is saying. Matter of fact, turn the media off. I'm glad God delivered me from Fox News. You know how he delivered me from Fox News? Because they took it off my Dish Network and all I could watch was CNN. And I watched it for a little while and I realized I didn't like the news anymore. Then they put Fox News back on and I thought, my word, the world's going to hell in a hell. Basket. I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear that trash. Don't be shaken, church. He says in verse number three, that day shall not come unless these things happen. Hear me. That day, break it down, shall not come unless these things happen. I want you to see these things that are going to happen before the coming of the Lord. The first one, the Bible says in verse 3, there must be a falling away first. How many of you see that in your Bible? This has been interpreted to mean that there will be a great falling away from faith 
by believers in the last days. You've heard it preached this way. Maybe you've read it this way. It is supported in Scripture. We find in Scripture that in the last days there will be a great apostasy. There will be an apostate church that has done what? That has departed from truth. Listen, just because a church departs from hymnals doesn't make it an apostate church. Matter of fact, it's a good thing we departed from a lot of them hymnals because a bunch of them got false doctrine in them. Well, I just love ruffling feathers. It's a good thing we departed from the hymnals because the Bible tells us over and over again, sing a new song. So be careful before you start griping about all the new songs we sing and wishing you had your old songs back that singing new songs is actually scriptural and singing old songs isn't. See, y'all been 11 weeks without me. You forgot the way I preach. Y'all get more upset that we're not singing just over in the glory land than you do preachers aren't preaching the Bible. You get more upset that we're not singing song number 342 than you do that the church has departed from the truth of God's Word. I ain't ever had anybody make an appointment with me upset. Pastor, I need to meet with you. Upset because of something they heard that another denomination, another church in town, another preacher was preaching. But they're lined up to tell me why they think we should start singing hymns again. I better move on. I hope I made some people mad. I'm just in that mood today. I am. I am. I'm in that mood. I feel it. Because we get upset over the wrong thing. I'm telling you, we're moved by the wrong things. Hear the heartbeat of your preacher today. We're disturbed over the wrong things. Some of you are more upset that we turn lights off during worship, that it's dark in here. I've never heard you upset about how dark the world is, but it sure does bother you that some light bulbs are dimmed down during church. Somebody, Caleb, tell me to move on. Thank you. There must be a falling away first. This is supported in Scripture. 1 Timothy 4 verse 1 says, Now the Spirit expressly says, In the later times, in the latter times, some will depart from the faith by devoting themselves to deceitful spirits and to the teaching of demons. And Jesus said in Matthew chapter 24 that many will fall away and they'll betray one another and they'll hate one another. And He said this, Many false prophets will arise and will lead many astray. And because, hear it, Red letter, and because lawlessness will be increased, the love of many will grow cold. Why will there be a departure of faith? Because they'll give heed to to doctrines of demons, but also because they love sin, they love lawlessness, they love disorder, they love their sin more than they love God. And Jesus says, because of an increase of lawlessness, the love of, hear it, of many will grow cold, but the one who endures to the end shall be saved. There's no doubt, church, in anyone's mind, anyone who studies the Word of God, anyone who pays attention to the apostate, lukewarm church, there's no doubt that there will be and that there is a great falling away in the last days. Many of you have loved ones that have fallen away. I got more I have to I want to say than I have time to say it. There's no question about that. But the falling away that Paul's dealing with in 2 Thessalonians 2 is not the falling away that I just now referenced. The falling away in 2 Thessalonians chapter number 2, he says this must happen first before the coming of the Lord, and that falling away is dealing with the rapture 
of the church. Matter of fact, in verse number 3, it should have been translated, for that day will not come except there be a departure first. And that is speaking of the rapture of the church. In essence, what Scripture is saying is that unless there is a departure of the church first, then Jesus can't come again. Are you following me? I told you they're two different events. Unless he does this first by getting the church out of the way, so that lawlessness can have her work unless he removes the restraining factor which is the church of Jesus Christ unless the church departs then the second coming cannot happen so these two things he said must happen first a falling away the second thing look at it in your Bible is that the man of sin will be revealed that speaks of the Antichrist. The Antichrist will be revealed. People have asked, when will the Antichrist show up? Is he living right now? I have no idea. Neither do you. If you buy a book that tells you somebody that knows where he is, where he, you know, that he's living right now, you just wasted your $12.95 for that book. I do want you to know this though, immediately after the rapture of the church, the Antichrist will be revealed. It won't take much months. It won't take years. He will be waiting. I personally believe that my generation will see the coming of the Lord. I believe it's the greatest sign of all the signs. He said when Israel becomes a nation again, when the fig tree re- is reborn, that generation will not pass away. It will see the coming of the Lord. I believe that generation is alive and living today. I do believe the rapture of the church will happen in my lifetime. So therefore, yes, I personally believe that the Antichrist is alive. He's set up. I believe he's in place and when that trumpet sounds and when the church gets out of here immediately he's going to step into his position. How do you know that preacher? Because our text says two things have got to happen before the Lord comes again. First there's got to be a departure of the church and second there's got to be an Antichrist who will rise up. Are you still with me? Look at verse number 4 quickly. Verse 4 begins to describe the Antichrist. It says, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God. Whether the Antichrist is living or not in the world, I can tell you that the Antichrist spirit is in the world today. 1 John chapter 4, verse 3 says, But every spirit that does not acknowledge Jesus Christ is from God. That is the spirit of the Antichrist. Hear it. 1 John 4, verse 3. That's the spirit of the Antichrist which you have heard is coming and even now is already in the world. Can I tell you today, friend, there is is a spirit at work in the world today. It's at work in D.C. It's at work in the United Nations. It's even at work throughout the religious organizations. It's at work within the economy structure of the world. It's the spirit of Antichrist. Now if you're here this morning and you're saved, you don't need to know anything about the Antichrist. It won't hurt you to study it. Go ahead and buy a book. Learn all you want to know about the Antichrist. There's and wrong with it, but don't worry yourself about the mark of the beast. Don't be afraid of what it's going to be like having to live under the rule of the Antichrist. Don't worry about the wrath of God during the seven years of tribulation. Don't worry yourself with the Antichrist because for you as a believer, it won't matter. Can somebody shout hallelujah today? But if you do miss the rapture, If you do happen to stumble back across this sermon, you that are sitting here today and you don't get right with God, the rapture takes place next week. I promise you, you'll go to Facebook and find this message faster than any message you've ever looked for. So if you do miss the rapture, you better be on the lookout for a man called Antichrist. Let me tell you a little bit about this man Quickly, let me just tell you, jot a few things down about him. You need to watch out for a world leader. He will rise up with hope for a world that just experienced the breaking news of millions that have vanished. Now I have people say to me, Pastor, I believe the world's got to get a lot worse before the rapture takes place. I always wonder what world they're living in. But I can tell you, 
Even if the world starts getting better, and it will not according to Scripture. Even if it started getting better, it won't take but a split second when the church is gone for this world to erupt in evil, in chaos. This world, think about it. Think about what the Christians represent in the world. The only true morality you find in the world today is the morality of God's law. That's why lawlessness, hear me today, lawlessness is not just people running up and down the streets burning down buildings. Lawlessness is a spirit that says, we don't want your law, God. We're going to do it our way. Lawlessness is when is a spirit that when God says marriage is between a, a woman and a man, lawlessness says, no, God, that's old-fashioned. The highest court of our land, God, has changed your law. Now it's between a man and a man and a woman and a woman if they choose. That's the spirit of lawlessness. Lawlessness says a baby ought to be, uh, the law of God says a baby ought to be born because God says I know the plans I have for that child. No child is an accident. The law of God says I knew you in your mother's womb. I formed you. But lawlessness says that's not good enough for us, God. We're going to change the law of our nation to where now you can murder an unborn baby. Come on, somebody. Y'all too quiet on me. I want you to understand the spirit of lawlessness. Why? It's already at work because the spirit of Antichrist is already at work. And I want you to know when you take out everything that represents good, everything that's moral, when you take out the sound of the church, when you take out the goodness of the... when you, Listen, our, even our president said the church is essential. And you better believe the church is essential. And listen to me today. I don't know. I can tell you all day long what the church has done. I can talk about how the church has fed the hungry, how the church has given the thirsty something to drink. I can tell you what the church has done, but many times what you and I don't see in the natural eyes is what the church has prevented from happening. We can see the feeding program, but do you know the church has prevented divorces? The church has prevented listen to me, you think racism's bad now, you ought to see it without the church holding it back from its full lawless force. Hear me today church, I'm preaching better than you're helping me. It's not what the church has done, it's what the church keeps from happening. Imagine Imagine the murders that would be on our streets if we didn't have the goodness of the body of Christ in the church in the world today when you take that puppy out of here. How good it is. I don't care how good it is. I said I don't care how good it is. Overnight, this place has become a world war zone. And they're going to be looking for someone on a world stage level, who has the answers. I said his name's Antichrist. In the first year or two of the tribulation, many will call him Mr. Wonderful. He won't be called Antichrist, only you'll know him by that, because you know the word. They'll call him Mr. Wonderful. He'll dominate the airwaves. He'll be a military genius, just giving you scripture in a story real quick. He'll, he'll be a military genius that will protect all the nations of the world who will come into alliance with him. He will control the economy. Matter of fact, he will have so much control over the world's economy that he will institute a number. It'll be the number of man. Revelation calls it the number 666 that without it you will be un- unable to buy or to sell. Money will be useless. You will sell a brick of gold for a piece of bread. Credit cards will have no meaning whatsoever to any one of you. It will be the economy, a worldwide system called the mark of the beast. I want you to hear the words of the Antichrist. Matter of fact, I'm already hearing his words. 
They're already coming. In the year 2020, I'm still trying to figure out if this is the last year of the last decade or the first year of a new decade. But whatever the case, I'm ready for it to be over. Listen, coronavirus, overnight everybody started running around with masks on. Rioting in all the streets of every major city overnight. I can't breathe. That was the sound of the coronavirus victim. I can't breathe. And it was the sound of that man who tragically lost his life at the hands of someone who should have saved and protected his life. I can't breathe. The breath has been taken in an instant in 2020, not only in our nation but around the world. In the words of the Antichrist, I'm, 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 I'm hurrying. Don't miss this. His words will be peace and safety. He will offer peace to the world. Don't you know the world is ready for peace? He will offer peace to the world, but it will be a false peace. There will never be a true peace on this earth until the Prince of Peace returns and sets up his millennial reign, sets up his kingdom where he'll reign for a thousand years. His word will be safety. I already hear that word. Everybody today is saying, be safe. I'll talk to complete strangers on the phone, business calls. They'll say to me, they don't even know me. It's a business-related call. I don't know them. Before they hang up, they say, be safe out there. Your Bible says in 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 3, For when they shall say, Peace and be safe, or peace and safety, then, listen to it, then sudden destruction shall come upon the earth and travail as upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. He says when they begin, when they start saying, you peace, and when they start saying, be safe, be safety, be careful. We've always heard peace, but I don't think we've ever heard safety like we've heard it in the year 2020. Your Bible says, the Word of God says, when you hear that, then, then it's coming. He says, then destruction's coming. The Word says this man talking of the Antichrist will be physically appealing. He will be highly intelligent. He will be a man who will have Christ-like personality and charisma. He will make a treaty with the Jews. I'm going quick. He will overcome the resistance of the European Confederacy. He will be attacked by the kings of the south. He will be shot in the head. He'll receive a deadly head wound and it will be healed up and, 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 and he will rise up from that wound. He will be a world leader. He will then break the Jewish treaty. He will kill the two witnesses. Read Revelation to learn more about it. And then all of a sudden, he moves from being Mr. Wonderful to being Antichrist, the devil on the earth. He will, he will set up his, his temple. He will set up his, 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 his throne in the temple. He will demand worship. Are you hearing me today? He will demand worship and here's what he's going to do. He's going to persecute the Jews. He's going to kill not only the two witnesses, Witnesses, but the 144,000 Jewish evangelists. He will destroy the world church, but the good news is that when Jesus comes again, he will be defeated at Armageddon, and ultimately he'll be cast into the lake of fire where he'll be tormented forever and ever and ever. Come on, Pastor Josh, come help me. I want you to be aware, be aware, be aware of this man called Antichrist, and do not listen to what he says, I'm preaching to those that will be left behind. If you're living during the Antichrist days, watch out because he will have a companion, a buddy. He'll have a pal called false prophet. Again, fast forward, the Bible says in Revelation chapter number 13, the false prophet will have great power and he will cause the whole earth to worship the Antichrist. 
the power of the false prophet, he'll be able to call fire down from heaven, your Bible says. He will deceive by miracles. He will, he will, he will cause the earth to make an image of the Antichrist. He will give life to the beast. He will cause that image to speak. He will force all of those. No, I'm going quick, but I'm out of time. He will force them. Those who do not worship the image, those who don't worship the beast, he will kill them. He forces all to receive the mark of the beast, remember, to join the economy, either on his right hand or on his forehead or on their forehead. If you don't, he will have your head chopped off of your body. You will be decapitated. It doesn't matter. It won't matter if you're rich or free, small or great. He will make it where no one will be able to buy or sell without the mark of the beast. And those who refuse it will be killed. I want to finish this morning in our opening text of 2 Thessalonians 2. Look at verse 6. Because, see, now you know what withholds the Antichrist. Now you know that wit that what withholds that he, Antichrist, you can put in your Bible there, might be, verse 6, might be revealed in his time. Now don't miss this. If you don't catch anything else, go home with this. Let me reference what I said a moment ago here. Something on this earth right now is restraining Antichrist. I've already told you what it is. It's the church. The church is the restraining factor of Antichrist. The church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Aren't you glad to be a part of it today? Verse number 7, look at it. The mystery of iniquity does already work. Only he, I'm reading King James Version, only he, you can put in parentheses there in your Bible, that's speaking of the church. That's why context. Yes, we believe in a falling away from truth, but that's not the context of 2 Thessalonians 2. The context is the departure of the church. And verse 7 brings it full circle in the context. The mystery of iniquity does already work. Only he, speaking of the church, who now lets, you can put in parentheses, or now hinders evil, will let, or you could put there, will continue to hinder until he, again, the church, be taken out of the way. Hallelujah. told growing up that the hindering force on the earth holding back Antichrist and holding back lawlessness was the Holy Spirit. I was taught that when the Holy Spirit's taken out of the way, that's not the gospel. You can't take the Holy Spirit off the earth. He is God. You can't, Jesus, the Bible says from the heights to the depths, from the mountains to the, I mean pits to everywhere, you can't escape the Holy Ghost. The restraining factor is not the Holy Spirit. The restraining factor is the church. Now the Holy Spirit happens to dwell in the church. So when you do take the church out of the way, you do take the presence of the Holy Spirit that dwells every believer. Did you know you take the Holy Ghost everywhere you go? You didn't have to come to the church today to get in the presence of the Holy Ghost. You're supposed to take the presence of the Holy Ghost with you. And the church, once it's gone, won't be taking the Holy Ghost with them in that type of anointing. Before the return of Jesus, church, there will be an intensified increase of lawlessness that has not been seen since the days of Noah and Sodom and Gomorrah. And at the very end, law and order will break down. Mark my words. 
lawlessness and disorder will be what's being reported every day. The very end, demonic lawlessness will burst forth. And I do personally believe that the church might experience a brief, and hear me, a brief period of terrible evil, but it will be quickly terminated by the coming of our Lord Jesus. I'm not saying it's going to be peachy, hunky-dory until Jesus comes back. We're going to go through some stuff, but nothing like what the world will go through when he gets us out of here. Oh, my word. Thank you, Lord. It's going to be unleashed, lawlessness. You're already seeing it. It'll be unleashed. It's in our schools. Our schools are murder zones. They carry guns in and kill each other. That's why when people say, I think it's going to get a lot worse before Jesus comes back. Charlie, they're carrying guns into our schools and killing each other. You know why? Because we changed the law. We told God prayer was illegal. We told God his word was not welcome. So when you change God's law, here's what happened the day same-sex marriage. Some of you heard me tell this. I told it the Sunday after. The day same-sex marriage was legalized in the United States of America, I heard the voice of the Lord clear as day. I wrote it down. I knew it was a word. And he said, today I have released the spirit of lawlessness on this nation. In other words, what I was holding back before, I'm not holding it back like I used to. And time and time again, we're seeing the fruit of that. We're seeing our streets filled with violence. Why? Because if we walk away from His law, all we're left with is lawlessness. He has an order. Why did it ever become illegal to hang up in our public schools, thou shalt not murder? Why did that ever become illegal to tell our kids, it's not a good idea to kill each other? When we walk away from this, we're allowing lawlessness to be unleashed. The mystery of lawlessness is already at work, but it's being held back by the church. The church is essential. We got to keep being the restraining force. We do that with law and order. We do that with his word. Stand to your feet all over this building. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. If you haven't already subscribed to our channel, you can do so by clicking right here. And also, here's another message that might be of a great blessing to you. You can click right here. Thanks again for joining us today, and we'll see you next time. God bless you.